All right, so you know what we're doing today? <laughs> I'm sorry, it started over. <laughs> you just, you looked so like. <laughs> uh, aren't you introducing the topic today? <laughs> I was, but for some reason I expected you to like, like gift it over to me or something. Uh, yeah, what are we doing today? <laughs> okay, so today we're going to write a program. Well, Zach's going to write the program. And we're going to use some threats. And we're going to try to get them to make use of a lock. Now we're going to race them at it all at once. And we're going to use a hundred of them. And whoever holds the lock last, we're going to print that number to the screen. So. Okay, so... What will we need to start this program? Well, for, first off, we need a source file, so whatever, we'll call it race.c, sure. We need centered input output because we want to use output to put something on the screen. We need might need lib.h. It tends to come up um, from time to time. If I, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we, we need pthreads, obviously. I don't know why I always want to pluralize it. It's pthread. I guess because you never just use one thread. I mean, yeah. You're always using more than one, <laughs> so. Anyway. So, we'll define the number of threads. I mean, this is not pthread. This is just we're doing this because why not to be a hundred so we can just yeah. say NTD and then we can change the number if we want to crank up the value yeah and cranking up the value does uh, slow things down yeah so, some systems might not be able to handle some number of threads so which is why we start with a hundred yeah a hundred should system be system can handle that you know, whether or not any system can our system can so <laughs> that's what's important <laughs> for the moment we're going to create a result structure, okay? And so this is going to have a p thread mutex t, which is these are how you create a lock. And you know, I'll, right. we're going to call it lock, but you it doesn't have to be. It is a mutex, yes. but it's for mutual exclusion, and that's the primitive that's provided by p thread. So that's what we're going to use. Right. And we're going to have last ID, which is basically just going to be used as a storage area so once the lock is acquired they're going to write to that and then at the end of the simulation the last thread who wrote to it that's the value that's going to be there because that's the last, the last thing they got wrote to sure. so so we need a pool of threads i mean so those are represented with p thread uh, i'm saying that again <laughs> I don't know why I want to do that. P thread, I think you just type D off thread. Um, so we need the number of threads of that. Okay. Thread arg data. Okay. So these are basically going to be how we pass the um, thread arg. I didn't. I didn't create a thread thread arg structure. We we need to be able to pass. Uh, the value, the thread's ID into the thread. So the, the, we're going to use uh, strike, we'll call it thread R. We'll just have the thread ID in it. We don't really need to give it anything else. So now we're going to create an array called data of NTD number of thread arguments. And we need a result structure, but we only have one result because that's the resource that they're competing for the use of, okay? And now we're going to write our thread function, which is always returns and takes a void star. So if you want a different thing, which we want a thread arg, we'll have to convert it. So we cast using a thread arg star which because that's the type we want to be and then we'll take the void star so a basically is untyped pointer to a, a place in memory and at this point t is a thread arg typed pointer to memory so once you have 
that converted you can access you know T uh, arrow IV that's available now whereas a arrow ID doesn't exist because A is a void star. It's not. It doesn't have an ID in it, it so you can't can't access that. Okay, so not not need that yet. But so what what this wants to do is it wants to write result dot r. Uh, sorry, r dot you know r dot last ID. It wants to set r dot last ID to be its thread ID, but we're going to have to acquire the lock first. So we use pthread mutex lock, and when once we've acquired the lock, then we do our business, which is writing our thread ID to the last ID and then we unlock it when we're done and then the thread will exit um, so now we'll write a main function which is going to launch some of these So before we can ever make use of a mutex, we need to init it with p3 mutex in it. And we need to destroy it when we're done as well. But we have this atter, which we do, if atter is null, the default mutex attributes are used. The default attributes are suitable for our purposes, so we just that's we, we yeah. just pass null there. Okay, so uh, I, we're gonna go through i zero i less than ntd. and we'll set the input. The, the thread argument data sub i basically for this thread to be it will set the ID to be i so that we will have a thread ID created for every um, for every one of these numbers from 0 to NTD minus 1 so now we can launch the thread p thread create and we tell it basically it's p thread t which is in thread pool sub I and we give it null here because we didn't need to change the attributes um, and then the thread function is what we hand there is the function pointer and then the argument is data sub I. Okay, so we've populated the argument with stuff which it will pull out at, at this um, area and we've created them now we need to wait for them to finish before we can know what happened so so we do pthread join and again We don't need the result. We do need an extra print, close parenthesis there. And uh, at this point, we could print an error message. And exit. Okay, so. If this finishes, then all of the all of the threads have been collected, so they're finished running. So we no longer need uh, p thread mutex destroy. We no longer need the mutex, and we can print the result.
Okay. This perm is done. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll copy the make fall from lesson one. And we call this race, so we'll change the target here to be race. And we'll see if it builds. We get all sorts of issues. Duplicate type death, type nine. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not finishing these statements. Red arg result. Forgot to put what to call them. That that's all it was. Okay, so when we run this, so the first time we run, we get 70 is whichever the thread that was able to acquire the lock and write its value last. We got 99 that time. And you do this enough, you'll find that, <laughs> you know, P threads, the way they structure them, you do not get a random set of numbers well, possible coming out. Right now, all the threads are, some of the threads, the early threads, are able to acquire the lock immediately yeah. because no other threads are running. All the threads aren't given a fair chance. That's right. So, what... In order to get around that, like, you know, 76, like, what? <laughs> we get all sorts of stuff. Yeah. But instead of just having uh, the mutex, if, if we use a different thing, which will show, we, we can at least start them all at the same time. So we'll, what that will be is called a barrier. Right. And so we'll, we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Sounds good.